We here at Donut enjoy four wheel drifts. We like rally pedigree and we love station wagons that can embarrass supercars. So that means we're really into Audi Quattro. But more than one all wheel drive system bears that name and those can be as different as Camrys and Conan Segs. So today we're gonna look at all the current versions of Quattro and figure out how they work. Quattro means four in Italian. I know two words in Italian. One of them's Quattro and one of them's Cinco. And that last one's Spanish. <laughs> Let's go. Are you tired of seeing so many junk cars? Then buy this shirt and wear it every day so junk car owners know we buy junk cars. Hi, I'm Junk Car Jimmy. I want you to give me a call. Look at this car. Junk. Ooh. Now that's junk. Yeah. Best I can do is 50 bucks. So get it at donutmedia.com today. I'm Junk Car Jimmy, and we'll pay you a lot of money for that junk car. Depending on the year, though. Nothing too new, nothing too old. It's gotta be just right. Quattro is what Audi calls all-wheel drive, but that originated with a single car called the Quattro back in 1980. Now at the time, all-wheel drive was common in trucks and military vehicles, but the idea to put it in a sports car was revolutionary. The Quattro, it dominated the World Rally Championship and Pikes Peak Hill Climb, solidifying Audi's reputation for all-wheel drive performance. So to commemorate that success, all of Audi's all-wheel drive systems now carry the Quattro name, but with a lowercase q to distinguish them from the car that started it all. The current lineup includes five different types of all-wheel drive systems, and there are some pretty big differences between between them. The one that's most different from the rest that we're going to talk about is the Quattro used by fully electric vehicles like the RS e-tron GT. We're not going to get into it, but that system is designed to take on the Tesla Model S and the Porsche Taycan. But these systems are drastically different from what's used with internal combustion, so that's a subject for its own episode. At least, maybe, I don't know, you guys don't really like EV stuff, but if you do, leave a comment down below and we'll do a whole episode on it. Now, a more common system is transverse Quattro, often described using the original manufacturer's name, Haldex. That's for optional all-wheel drive systems in front-wheel drive cars where the engine is mounted perpendicular to the car, like in the Audi A3 and TT. It relies on a multi-plate clutch mounted at the rear differential instead of having a center differential like the original Audi Quattro. Because of that design, older Haldex systems could only send half the power to the rear. So some critics say this isn't real Quattro, and they even call it faux wheel drive. Oh, you clever, clever driver journalist. How funny with words you are. We just make YouTube videos. <laughs> but transverse systems are found in some serious performers like the TTRS and RS3, even if it's not what most people think of when they hear Quattro. Half of the Audis sold today use Quattro Ultra, paired with a longitudinal engine like the original Quattro. So having the engine mounted parallel to the car keeps things simple when using a drive shaft, which is why it's also the most common configuration for rear wheel drive cars. But to add power for the front wheels, most all wheel drive systems use a center differential to divide power between the front and the rear. So in old Audis like the original Quattro, the center differential always sent some power to both axles. That's permanent all wheel drive. Ultra is different and Audi calls it permanently available all wheel drive and that's not the same. Permanently available, huh? Oh, oh, that's funny. Look who's calling. Quattro Ultra spends most of its time sending power to just the front wheels. And when the system was first announced, not everyone was super happy about that. Remember what people said about their old Haldex systems? Well, pretty much the same thing were said about the front bias Ultra. It's not real Quattro. Freaking haters. But here's the thing, you may not actually want permanent all wheel drive. Audi engineers discovered something which was a bit worrying for a company that built its reputation on all wheel drive. During 90% of ordinary driving, all wheel drive is not only unnecessary, it's wasteful. Sending power to all four corners consumes more fuel because the engine has to rotate greater mass than if it only had to power two wheels. And don't I know that? I get like 12 miles to gallon in my GX 470. It's terrible. And I only go off road like once every month. That's like 90% of the time. <gasps> So Audi engineers designed a new version of Quattro that eliminates that waste, but retains all wheel drive functionality for the 10% of the time when you actually need it. Pretty freaking smart. And of course, Audi isn't the only company that knows this. A typical all wheel drive crossover or family sedan with all wheel drive is engineered so that most of the time power is only going to the front wheels. Power only gets sent to the rear wheels when necessary to make up for a loss of traction, for example. 
That's accomplished by having a clutch at one end of the drive shaft, either at the transmission or rear differential. So when power needs to be sent to the rear wheels, the clutch engages and it disengages when it's no longer needed. But there is still a source of waste in that system, and that's the drive shaft itself. If the clutch is at the rear differential, the drive shaft spins even when it's not powering the rear wheels. That consumes engine power and fuel. And if the clutch is at the transmission, well, the drive shaft is still turned by the rotation of the rear wheels, even when it's disengaged. And that extra rotating mass of the drive shaft, even when it's disconnected, still consumes power and fuel. It'd be the equivalent of having just extra heavy wheels in the rear end. So according to Audi, a spinning drive shaft decreases driveline efficiency by 20%, stealing power and burn more fuel. So to avoid this, Ultra disconnects the drive shaft at both ends. So on the back end of the transmission, Ultra uses a clutch pack like you'd find in a motorcycle. That sends power only when needed and disengages so the drive shaft can float when it's not. At the rear, a second clutch is used to fully disengage all-wheel drive, but it's not where you'd expect. The right rear axle is split in half, and the second clutch is between those two halves. That's a dog clutch, which uses two gear-like plates that mesh together instead of pressure plates. So when the front and rear clutches are both open, the drive shaft is disconnected from the wheels and the engine, and it doesn't spin. To switch from front-wheel drive to all-wheel drive, the front clutch pack engages to spin up the drive shaft. The drive shaft is always connected to the rear diff, but because that's an open diff and power follows the path of least resistance, all of that rotation is going to the disconnected half axle on the right, not to the wheels. Once that dog clutch on the axle engages, the drive shaft's rotation is transmitted to both wheels, and you've got all-wheel drive, baby. And if you want to know more about how an open differential makes that possible, we explained how these work in our episode we did on Torque Factory. Click right here. It'll be somewhere. Is it up here? So by using two clutches, the process of engaging all-wheel drive is incredibly smooth, and it happens in 200 milliseconds. But to make Ultra work perfectly for most drivers and in most situations, Audi engineers paired the mechanical system with sophisticated programming. Ultra works with onboard sensors, the ECU, and three different criteria to engage all-wheel drive. Proactive, predictive, and reactive. PPR. Oh, I have another PPR. PP really big. Proactive engagement uses vehicle sensors to make predictions about what is going to happen. But Ultra uses sensors in other clever ways, like checking the temperature and engaging all-wheel drive if it's cold and you're more likely to encounter ice. Predictive engagement takes into account the driver. The ECU builds up a profile on how you drive. So if you drive your car a lot harder, all-wheel drive will engage more often. It adapts to make sure you have the power delivery best suited to your driving style. Reactive engagement is response to detected changes in traction. Ultra transfers power when it detects a wheel has lost grip, the same thing that's done by traction control or limited slip depth. Quattro Ultra is engineered to be the all-wheel drive solution for the majority of drivers. The rear wheels are only engaged when necessary, and they aren't a leech on the system the rest of the time. Because it's designed around longitudinal powertrains and a center differential, it's an evolution of earlier Quattro systems. But it acts a lot like transverse Quattro and the system found in kind of boring crossovers available for many other companies. And that's turned out to be a bit of a problem because to a lot of people, Ultra doesn't seem very Audi-like. Audi built a reputation for high-performance all-wheel drive based on their roots and rally. Because it's not permanent all-wheel drive, the Ultra system isn't very rally. It isn't very sporty at all, actually, and some fans have expressed disappointment about that. Ultra isn't meant to offer maximum performance. It's engineered for how most people use their car most of the time. For the truly thrilling stuff, they make torsion-based Quattro with sport differential, and that is what you'll find in most of the S and RS cars, like the RS6 Avant. Avant is a fancy word, and it just means station wagon for British people. And the RS6 Avant is the tippy-top pinnacle of station wagon. It's got 591 horsepower. It goes 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. It goes 190 miles per hour in a station wagon. That's f***ing cool, man. You got the kids in the back, and they're screaming. They're like, Dad, why are you going so fast? And he's like, I'm just trying to outrun my pass. And they're like, but we're part of your pass, Dad. And you're like, get out of the car, and then you toss them. Don't do that. Even though it can go fast in a straight line, the RS6 is all about grip when going around corners, and that is where Quattro comes in. Up front is a relatively normal open differential. Power delivery to the left and right wheels is managed by a brake-based system. We talked about these in our Torque Vector episode, and I called them the 99 cent store Torque Vectoring. 
Now by itself, that's not all that special, but the way it works with the rest of the system is pretty clever. At the rear is Audi's Sport Differential. That is a true torque vectoring system. It uses electronically actuated clutch packs on the left and right axles to distribute power independently to each wheel. That maximizes your grip, it reduces your understeer, and it improves cornering speeds. Now in the middle is a torsion or torque sensing center differential. That sends 60% of the power to the rear wheels, but it can go all the way up to 80% if it's senses a loss in traction. And the real heart that pumps and feeds Audi's all-wheel drive system is its all-wheel drive torque vectoring, which integrates all three differentials, vehicle sensors, and the ECU to predictively manage power to all four wheels. It even has rear wheel steering to maximize cornering ability. Audi claims that by combining braking at the front diff, the torque vectoring rear diff, and the torsion center diff, the RSX can send 100% of the power to the rear wheels. But the pinnacle of Quattro performance is in the R8 supercar. And guess what, Audi fans? It's nothing like an Audi rally car. That's okay. It's the only car in the Audi lineup with a mid-engine layout, so it needs its own Quattro system. The R8 supercar Quattro system can send 100% of the power to the front or rear axles. And it does that first through a transaxle mounted to the rear of the engine. That combines the gearbox, the rear diff, the rear axles, and the center diff into one complete unit. And under most circumstances, that sends about 85% of the power to the rear wheels. But like all modern Quattro, the exact distribution varies based on road conditions and how the car is being driven. So to get power to the front wheels, R8 Quattro has a multi-plate clutch mounted at the front differential. That's pretty much transverse Quattro, which we talked about at the very beginning of this episode. With the axle switched, meaning the Quattro that Audi fans love to hate is integral to the R8. We'd love to do more on the R8 Quattro, and maybe we'll do a whole episode after Audi sends me one. You can have a dream car when you're an adult, right? Never too old for that. That and a punch buggy. Beep, beep. So there it is. Audi Quattro isn't just one system. It's freaking five. If maximum speed is what you want, well, you need Quattro with torsion and the sport diff. Or an R8 if you got the cash. On the other hand, Quattro Ultra may not be that rally-inspired Quattro you want, but it does the job it was designed for saving money and fuel while still providing that sweet all-wheel drive stability. All right, how about this? Count how many times I said Quattro in this episode. Count how many times I said Quattro. If you got the correct number, leave it in the comments, I'll send you a shirt. Whatever shirt you want that's on the donut website in your size, I'll find it if you can name the number of times I said Quattro. That includes the time I just said right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. We freaking love you. Thank you guys for watching us. Honestly, we really appreciate you guys. If you could hit that like and subscribe button, that helps us out so we can keep making this stuff entertaining you guys. And uh, follow us on Instagram at Donut Media. You can follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. And until next week, bye for now.